Please go ahead. I'm seven. Well, we actually, we've done three videos for the album. We did one for a song called All Lips Go Blue, another one for a song called Into the Night, and then for Tears and Tape as well. And I think it should be out, but I'm not quite sure. You know, I'm not a businessman. I don't work for a record company, so I just play music. So, um, it was a Finnish guy called Stefan Lindfors who did, um, or Stefan, yeah, who did, um, yeah, be your, your Stefan, but, uh, uh, who did, um, who directed the videos both for Into the Nights and for Tears on Tape and uh, you know they're just the band playing with all sorts of effects and, and then on Tears on Tape there's, um, there's a lot of people around the world drawing this symbol um, that's on the cover of the album as well and the symbol represents Tears on Tape T-O-T taught so uh, that's that it's fairly simple and it should be out that's good. Indeed. <laughs> well, I think we do repeat ourselves musically. Of course it happens, you know, where, you know, I'm a songwriter, we have a band, everybody has their own way of playing their instruments. And I can all of a sudden change my voice into, you know, Farinelli, you know, to do like any operas. Know, high up there somewhere, but um, 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 I think that writing a song is always different, and it always the process of of creating a song happens always so very differently that it makes the song different too. So there's no way, even you know, if you think you know, in the you know other way around, I would say that I wouldn't. You know, if we could have, we would have probably written Join Me in Death like a hundred times because it was a big hit. So mm -hmm. who, who doesn't want a hit? It would be great. You know, I'd be like, be laying down in money. <laughs> you know, I'd be rich as fuck, like Peter Byrne. And, um, but, but no, it doesn't happen like that. You know, you write what's in your heart and that's what comes out. And at times it's reminiscent of something you've done in the past and at some times it's something totally different tough to say. That's what we're here to try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, because uh, when we started out we didn't know anything about studios or we were starting out as being musicians. I, I think the biggest change is the fact that we played so much so many gigs we've been touring, you know. When we started out before, or well, let's say when we went into the studio to record our first album, we had maybe played 20 gigs. And now that we went over to do Tears and Tape, we had done maybe 1,500. It's very different because you have used to it, which also enables the band to concentrate more on the detail. So it's interesting too. Like I was looking at all those music mm. stuff, you know, in there, try to figure out how to make it sound even better. So it's you know it's it's bit by bit. Um. Uh, uh, uh. This song called uh, "All Lips Go Blue." That's probably the one. Since that was the first one we got together, I think. Uh, the first song that kind of opened up the floodgates to the rest of the album. But then again, uh, I don't know, I like it all. And at the end of the day, you know, it's like, I think that today is going to be important since we're going to be playing the new material live, so that will give um, new dimension, or dimension, tomato, tomato, um, to the songs. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, yes. Yes? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I've always liked, um, always liked artists that don't tell too much about what they do. You know, it's, sim it's a similar sort of difference to, you know, between a book and a film. 
Mm. Usually it's nice when your imagination does the work when you're reading a book. And then if you just see it in film, it's like... It, it can be a great film, though. I'm not mm. saying it could be The Hobbit is a great movie. But it's even better in book. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's always good to be a bit nervous. You know, it's healthy to have butterflies in your mm -hmm. stomach. But, uh, uh, I don't know, we'll see. You know, uh, we, we know that the gig is sold out, so it means that there's some people who still care for us. Mm -hmm. So the place is not going to be empty, which is great. And um, we'll see. You know, we haven't played uh, or toured with the band in a while, and now we're playing a, a different kind of a set. And it remains to be seen how people are going to react to it. We don't know in advance. And that's the kind of like the cool thing about it as well. We can fail or we can succeed. Or well, hopefully, you know, get into the gray area somewhere in between. It's so off to stay when we, we haven't done the gig yet. We'll be wiser in not too many hours. Mm hmm. We'll see. I'm going to be playing the acoustic guitar uh, tonight too, but I'm not playing any solo mm. acoustic stuff. But uh, it's just interesting, something to do. I used to play the acoustic back in 2001 or whatever, and a lot of songs, um, a lot of songs have been, you know, they they sound better with an acoustic on them, and it gives me something to do as opposed to just standing there. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll, we'll see where it leads to. You know, it's one, it's one of those things. I don't know. I'm a bit stressed out because. I can't mm. remember the chords. <laughs> I'll figure it out. No, it's not annoying. I, I think that's not nice that there's people. <laughs> it would be, it'd be terrible if there wouldn't be anything. But uh, um, but I find it odd that some people travel a long distance to see a gig through their iPhone. It's mm -hmm. odd, you know. I understand what if you're taking pictures. I do understand that. But it's an old school thing, like having a camera and taking a snapshot. That's fine. But actually people just, like, looking at their little tiny screen. When the band is actually playing their live, that's odd for me. It's, it's odd. You know, I don't mind, but, you know, it's... I like the old school, like, lighters in a ballad, yeah. and people actually enjoy them, you know, the gig. But... I don't fucking know, because it is crazy. Yeah. You're right. Well, well, we know a few songs that we um we can't really drop. Mm. Just the songs like um, Join Me That. It would be stupid if we want to play. Mm. Um, the songs like Right Same Arms, The Funeral of Hearts, um, Buried Alive I Love, um, Rip Out the Wings of a Butterfly. There's a few songs of each album that have been the kind of like the ones that people know. So I think it's important to play those and then to inject the set with a bit more unknown numbers. We're doing, f I think, four songs tonight. We're playing um, Olive Skull Blue, Tears and Tape, Into the Night, and Hearts at War. Then we're mm -hmm. playing from the old material, but we're going to do um, Passion's Killing Floor from Venus Dune. And then we're doing Sleepwalk and Pass Hope from Venus Dune that last mm -hmm. more than 10 minutes. And it's all tears and your sweet six six from our first album. And I guess that's pretty much it. So I, I think it's important to have like you have the stuff that you think that people know, and then just like fuck it up in between. You know, have something odd and crazy happen in between that. Do Wicked Game too. Obviously, can't play, cannot play Wicked Game. Cool, cool. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, we're thinking about it, but it's like the the thing is also that um, we're gonna keep the seat, uh, the seat, the set pretty rocking, so pretty mm -hmm. heavy, you know, uh, up tempo, and um, and then since all lips go blue into the night and tears of tape, the first kind of singles, we just 
This is the first week we're going to play those songs, so we, don't, we don't really know how it's going to work out. So that's, that's the exciting part. And, it, and it's also some songs, they might sound great on an album, but they don't work live. And then some songs that are not as great on the album might be great live. And now we're trying to figure it out. But we can't figure it out without an audience. So mm -hmm. we have to see how people react to it. That's that. Well, the first one was probably like a flute or something like that. I'm not sure who will call it and finish. I think everybody in school has that at some point. But, uh, no, it was a bass guitar my my, my dad bought me when I was maybe eight or nine years old. And yes, I do have it. It's broken down a bit. But yeah, I have it. I played my first gigs with it. And it's one of those things it wasn't cool when I was a kid, but now I'm so fucking old that it's actually vintage, which makes it super cool. So, so it's a great little instrument. A cheap old Japanese Gibson uh, copy from 80s or late 70s. It's a good one. Oh, I w w what I would want to wipe out myself. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I'm not spending my time on the internet that much. Oh, you, know, <laughs> you know, when I do, I'm, I'm checking out some, like, you know, musical instrument stuff. But, um, but uh, there's always rumors, and especially because of the internet, there's so many people can be anonymous. They don't have to use their own names, so they're able to put whatever in there, oh. which is kind of a good thing, and at the same time, it's a bad thing. So uh, you can't believe anything you read these days anymore. It's impossible because there's no censorship. No, you know, it's just filled with shit information most of it. So, uh, so no, no more of the rumors, the better. I think it's it's good to have stories flying about. Mm -hmm rather have that than not have any stories flying about, you know. That would mean that people would find us boring. So it's cool if, uh, if they really take a time, to, you know, whatever it might be. I never had a plan when I, you know, had my first tattoo, and I still don't. So, so it remains to be seen. There's a couple of things that'd be nice to get. Well, I can't remember what they are at the moment, but uh, I had a like, list somewhere. But um, I have quite a few, and um, and you know, you know, tattoos are like <laughs> are like underwear. You have to change them on occasion or get a new pair on occasion, but don't have to do it all the time. So uh, I'm fine as it is, but I uh, uh, wouldn't mind getting some more at some point. Which one? That one? Here. Oh, uh, just like, like a hologram sort of thingy. Yeah. Besides on this hologram? Oh, uh, besides that, the the uh, O with umlauts. Yes. It's um, uh, double double O with mm. umlauts means uh, night in Estonian, and we have a band with my little brother called Ö. Uh. And so I'm the other Ö, uh, and he's the other Ö. Uh. So he's <laughs> planning on to get it tattooed at some point. Um, and then in one of the umlauts, there's a minus which is for, uh, because we took the tattoos the day after Peter Steele died from type 1 negative. So uh, that's, uh, that's my tribute to the great okay. late Peter Steele. This is the thing, we did that in Seattle. The MIGA had actually a big uh, the type 1 negative uh, symbol tattooed on his, uh, on his arm here. Uh-huh, really? with big fans. Oh, cool. Thank you once again. Lovely. Wonderful. So see you later tonight then, right? Yeah.